Megan Comics 101, issue 22. Marketing. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome, mad creators, to the underground laboratory where together we're going to create some awesome comics because this is Megan Comics 101. This is the final issue. Actually, it's, it's technically not the final issue. If you're familiar with how this works, every week we cover a new topic having to do with creating comics. We're towards the very end right now where we're going to talk about marketing, but the way we do it is on Mondays, as I really, if you're watching this on release day, then it's Monday. Uh, on Mondays, I kick the week off, I introduce a topic, and then on Wednesday, I do a little bonus episode, and then on Friday, I do a quick tip. So we still have a bonus issue and a quick tip to do, but this is the final week. So yeah, 22 weeks long. This is episode 22, and the significance of that is... Well, the average American standard comic is about 22 pages long, so I figured that, you know, that, that makes sense to, to kind of cap it off on issue 22. Plus, I think I've covered uh, up until this point, other than, you know, like I said, marketing, what we're going to talk about today, I think I've talked about every major aspect of making comics. Now, where do I go from here? Well, I'll probably do a video where I kind of talk about that and figure out where we're going to go. But at the end of this week, if there's something that I didn't talk about or something that I missed because it's over after that, I'm still going to do comic content. So there'll still be other things. I might dive a little deeper into something here or there, plus other videos on making art or whatever. But we'll get into that later. Right now, we're talking about making comics. And uh, so let's get into marketing. Now we've talked about all the different aspects of creating a comic and everything. So say you've done that, you've put in the work, you've penciled, you've inked, you've you know colored, you've printed it, you've done all that stuff. Great. So now theoretically you have a finished product, but what is a finished product if no one's buying it? And in order to get people to buy it, you have to market this thing. So, and there's a lot of different approaches that you can take when marketing your book. So let's talk about some of those marketing methods. Now, I'm holding up one of my finished books. To have something like this in your hand that you can show people, that you can present it to, whether if you're at a comic convention, uh, whether if you're like me, you're, you've got a YouTube channel or on Instagram or whatever, and you can show somebody, you can flip through it. That makes so much sense. But you know, what if you're a webcomic artist? Well, you know, I guess you could walk around with an iPad and you can kind of show people stuff that way. That, you know, that can work. I've done like portfolio reviews where I just strictly use an iPad in lieu of physical media. But I would say even if you are a, a webcomic artist, sometimes it doesn't hurt if you could just print out your comic book, put it in a form like this, and now with like print on demand, uh, you can get just a low print run just to have something like this or even through Amazon KDP you can even print one of these things and have it shipped to you and something that you can use to present to people because I think having some sort of a physical version of your copy even if you are primarily a web comic artist I think that you know speaks volumes and it's just so good to be able to you know put something in somebody's hand some tangible physical product. So we know most of the world is going digital so we're definitely not going to ignore that aspect of it, but sometimes there are some traditional methods that we can still use, just like the printed comic. Ads. Now, printed ads are something that could still be fairly effective, although I wouldn't advise you just to advertise in just any publications. The problem is, depending also on your demographic, and you have to know who you're marketing to, and we'll, we'll touch on that, but depending on your subject matter, you may be marketing to a younger crowd that may not even read magazines, but Whatever the case is, if they are buying print comics, if that's what you're selling, there are still print publications that you can use to market your comic book. And I'm not just talking about magazines, but uh, you know, other than comics, now there are companies that will still run ads in their comics. Alterna Comics is one of these companies. Now for a while, they had really, really reasonable, uh, you know, ad placement rates and everything. Uh, here's, you know, you can see right in here, we've got an ad. Now these aren't for uh, Alterna specific titles, although I think the bigger their uh, distribution gets, the more popular they're becoming, the more comic books they're selling, those ad rates are going to go up and also they may switch just to a model where they're only advertising their own thing or just big companies. I don't know if this is the case, but I know at one time you can get really good results and because you are advertising in a comic, I mean you already have your, your fan base right there, fans of comics. 
they could come across your ad. Another printed ad that may be effective is in a Comic Con program. Usually everyone gets these. If you've been to a Comic Con, they've got them stacked all over the place. I know some Comic Cons are moving more towards digital programs that you can look on your phone, but I still think a lot of people pick up that physical program, and I know this just because of the amount of those programs that people would leave on my Comic Con booth as they walk away. And then, you know, they'll probably go back, oh, I lost my program and go get another one. But even if they have the phone, sometimes those phones go dead, so sometimes if, even if you have the access to the phone or you prefer the phone, sometimes people will get that physical program because you don't have to use up your data or your battery life on your phone. So a lot of people are still flipping through those uh, Comic-Con programs. I don't really know the pricing structure. Now with any of these marketing methods that I'm talking about, some of them there are costs involved, some of them are free to use, so you just have to figure as far as your budget and be smart about it. Don't invest a lot of money on an ad if for one you don't have the budget for it. You have to really have something that's really going to grab somebody's attention if an ad is going to work. So how you design your ad is another, that's a whole other thing. I won't really get into that that much, but you've got to grab people's attention attention really quick as people are flipping through. A lot of what I'm going to be talking about has to do with promoting your self-published books. If you've got a book that's, uh, you know, through Marvel or DC, it still helps to promote that. I mean, you see Marvel and DC artists all the time out there at conventions, you know, selling their own prints or original pages or the books. They're, they're out there. And so even if you are produced, I mean, the comic company is only going to do so much. If you're published by a major publisher, independent publisher or whatever, you're still going to need to do your own marketing. Self-promotion is a big part of that. And as I mentioned, some of these things, they don't cost any money at all. It does take time and it does take effort and it does take getting other people on board. But there are ways that you for free can market your stuff. Guerrilla marketing techniques. And maybe I should walk that statement back a little bit because there are some costs involved in some of these, but it's usually, nowadays it's not as much to say print out some stickers or postcards or, or anything like that that you can give out. T-shirts are a big thing. Just have a few t-shirts printed up, print on demand. You can wear them around. You can have some of your friends wear them around. The effectiveness of that, you know, every all these little things, some things may work better than others, and a lot of what marketing is is just getting your your whatever your project or is out in front of people. Just because somebody sees an image on a t-shirt doesn't mean they're gonna go, oh, I'm gonna go buy that. If you're on top of mind and you get people to keep seeing the same images over and over wherever you're posting this, whether it's online, we'll get more into that, or physically where you're at at a convention if you're wearing some sort of advertisement. It's constantly being in front of people, letting people know who you are, so when they do get to the point where they're gonna make a purchase, they'll remember you. But the cost of printing stickers and buttons and all that kind of stuff is relatively inexpensive nowadays to what it would cost to run like a full page ad in some sort of trade magazine which may not give you the kind of results that you want. But the great thing about stickers and t-shirts and stuff like that is that people want to show them off. You give them a sticker, they're gonna, they may slap it on their laptop or a button they may put on their backpack. So as you're giving these little free things out, people are wanting to show them off and you know, people like, oh, where did you get that? And make sure that there's some story behind it when you give it to them so people will remember so it's just like I don't know I just got it at some guy's booth you know put us when you're if you're gonna give something out put a store something that somebody's gonna remember so when somebody does ask them oh that's cool where did you get it you can they, even maybe it's got a little URL on the side or something I mean no buttons are pretty small I do put URLs on all my buttons uh, it's kind of hard to see and some people might not even notice it's there but you do whatever you can but on the topic of stickers I mean maybe people will like plaster these stickers like you see, sometimes you go into like a bar and they've got stickers all over the place. Uh, more like a graffiti, like a slap a sticker on here and do promotions. Sort of that, you know, punk rock attitude. I mean, hip hop is big on this. Like the thing is, like the best, some of the best marketers are people that were into punk rock or early hip hop where they're selling tapes out of the trunks and things like that. Those are the sort of methods that you can adopt and use for creating comics. So maybe you're a little hesitant about the whole graffiti angle, but there's there's some really cool hacks that you can use. One of them that I like is that, and this will go into more of a social media thing, and we'll talk more about that in a bit, but you can go out there with your camera and take pictures of, say, buildings or signposts or whatever, and you can go in and, um, in Photoshop and digitally just add your stickers to stuff like this. This is something that's really cool because you can create this whole marketing campaign and show this stuff around town, and then it, it, even though it's physically not out there in the world, you can 
share this stuff online, have a, a, a brick wall or, some, or a building that people may notice and then digitally go in and put some graffiti, some sort of advertisement for your comic book. You share that and people are looking at it like, oh, they, and they may not know it's real. If you're good at like photo manipulation and go, you can go into Photoshop and, and do like a mural over a brick wall or something like that, post it online and people are looking, oh, man, oh wow, this must be a big thing. I know this place. This They've got a, like an ad or somebody tagged this on this thing and it's all, you know, there, it, there's nothing illegal about it it's all you know it's all virtual but you can start to build sort of campaigns on your social media and you know build anticipation I mean I remember when Watchmen came out it was like who's watching the Watchmen and all the ad campaign leading up to the Watchmen we didn't know what the Watchmen was but we were intrigued and then little by little they're introducing more about what this thing is and you can do the same thing another thing going back to the whole punk rock and like that skater aesthetic when I was a kid I had this skateboard as a Rob Roscoff skateboard and what they did with that, the, the artist, it started off with just this little crack and you can see I think these hands kind of ripping through the board and you maybe you saw an eyeball or something. And each subsequent version of that skateboard that came out would have this creature getting further and further out. So it was each board was almost an advertisement for the next board. So think about stuff like that when you're marketing. You know, show a little bit and you can start introducing as you go, like in your feed, social media wise, introduce a little more. And these are just just uh, things that really get people interested. Now, obviously, with social media, you have to build an audience, and that is a whole other, you know, ball of wax. But back to the whole, you know, punk rock scene and everything. One thing that they had, sort of these DIY marketing campaigns, was you know they had street teams. They in, they recruited people to get on board and go out and help market this thing. And you can pay people to do that, but sometimes it's not necessarily even having to pay them, especially with social media the way it is right now, because there are a lot of people out there that would love to support what you're doing, and maybe they don't have the wherewithal to support you financially, but they still want to help you out. And that is another, that is very powerful. So if you get somebody like, oh man, I really want to support you, but I just don't have the money. See if you can say, oh, I, I appreciate that. I understand and everything. But if you want, I mean, sharing is just as effective because if you can get, if you can get somebody who maybe can't afford to buy one of your books that can, you know, share it and sell it to three people that would, that's better than the one person that would have bought your book. So get, see if you can start to build a street team of people that are willing to help you go out there and promote your product. Now, I know a lot of people, artists and creative people in particular, are a little hesitant about marketing. It, to them, some people feel sleazy, but honestly, you got to get over that because it's only sleazy if you're trying to sell garbage to people that don't need it. If you've got a great product that people actually would want to get if they even knew about it, then you've got to get out there and let people know because there's so many amazing things out there that somebody would want. They just don't know about it. So you've got to find who's interested in this and then put it in front of them. And there's nothing sleazy about that. Another mindset that artists have is that just marketing is hard. Hard. And I thought about, I thought this for a long time. This was my opinion. I didn't do as much marketing as I should have. I you know I just wanted to create and, and make cool stuff, and that's awesome. And still, I guess if I if I could choose to do one or the other, I would. Unfortunately, the world we live in isn't like that. If you want to create cool stuff and you want to be able to earn some money off of it or make a living off of it or a career off of it, you've got to learn to market yourself. And there's just really no if, ands, or buts about it. But the thing is, when you, when you get this mindset that marketing is hard, art is hard, drawing is hard. I mean, you had to take the time to learn how to draw and how to create something. Marketing is no different. You can do it. Anyone can do it. You just need to do research. And I'm proof to that fact. I mean, I stayed away from marketing for a while because I just didn't want to do it. But once I started learning about it, and it's just it's just like drawing. You pick it up. You've just got to put in the effort. And as I did that, I learned to like marketing, maybe even love marketing. So now it's kind of... I still think art's up here, marketing maybe down here, but but I learned to like doing the marketing and I when you start seeing the results and the fruits of your labor with that, it's almost like a, a puzzle. If you can figure it out, there's, then you want to do more of it. But you've got to put in that effort first and learn how to do it. It's no more difficult than, it might even be easier than drawing. I let know a lot of marketers, you know, most marketers, they couldn't draw and it would take them forever. Where I think you can, I think it's easier for an artist to pick up marketing than it is would be for a marketer to pick up 
how to be a, you know a creative artist so there are all different marketing styles and what works for one person might not work for the next person as artists a lot of us are fairly introverted it's hard for us to get out here i am an introvert i mean contrary to you may see me doing these videos and being gregarious and all that stuff but it wipes me out and i you know i i cherish my time just working at the desk and doing all that stuff and you know as much as i hate to tell you to do this if you don't believe me i've been doing youtube for a long time go back to some of my first videos and you're going to see how bad i was compared to what i can do now but you know i have been doing this for so long that i just get better at it and the more you do it the more comfortable you get doing it and it really is just taking those baby steps and the more you do it the better you're going to get and if you know again Go back to some of those, I, I don't want to tell you to do that, but if you if you have any doubt at all, go back to some of those early videos and you can see how dry and how stale and how boring I was. But let's say you just don't, I mean, you're just petrified about going on camera and, and all that. You can, there's other ways you can go about this. If you don't feel comfortable uh, being on camera personally, but maybe you're fine with, uh, you know, just speaking in general, you just don't want to show your face on camera. You can show your artwork and you can show your process and everything and you can do voiceovers. I've seen people that don't even do it and maybe you don't want to even do that. Maybe you can do it like a speed drawing and set it to music. For me, I don't watch any of that stuff. So if I turn on a YouTube video and it's even a, an awesome drawing but it's, it's it's just set to music it's a speed drawing and there's no voiceover or anything I'll qu quickly click off because the way I, I'm working while I'm watching YouTube so if there's no if there's nothing that I can be learned by audio and I will check back as I'm you know drawing and everything I'll look up and oh that's cool and everything and I'll watch these videos as I go but for me, that doesn't work. So, you know, the audience is gonna be different too. What may not have the most effect with one audience, it may work with some people because I've seen these, I've seen these videos with just a speed drawing set to music and they've got tons of views. And so there are people watching it. I, I'm just not one of them. So again, you gotta, gotta know your audience. And the more of these different styles of marketing that you can take on or you can embrace, uh, the better you're going to do. I'm trying to do as much as I can, you know, because I'll do, you know, sometimes I'll do short form content. Sometimes I'll do long form content. There's all these different social media platforms and they're all different. So you just embrace what works best for you. You know, maybe just in e sending out emails, find out what you can do, but don't just say, I, I'm not good at marketing. Find what part of marketing you're good at. And hopefully, and again, I, I encourage anyone to step out of their comfort zone and try to do some things with marketing that they're not as comfortable with. Now, I wanna talk about branding and niching down. This is super important to me. Like I said, everyone has different ways that they wanna go about this, but I will preach the gospel of branding and niching down all day long. When you're watching these videos, I don't think there's anyone out, else out here doing a mad scientist you know, aesthetic in an underground lair with a lab coat, talking about comics. So I am trying to create a story with the way I do things, my personality, all of these different things, trying to create something that no one else is doing. And that's when you can start to stand out. And you know whether that's super effective, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a huge YouTuber or anything like that, but you, everyone has to start somewhere and you gotta keep at it and you kind of keep pushing whatever your narrative is, whatever your passion is. You gotta do something unique that people are going to pay attention, that's gonna stand out, that people are going to be attracted to. So you developed your brand, you've niched down, you're doing something that not everyone else is doing, you've, you're standing out in the world, hopefully people are starting to take notice. What are some other methods that we can use to market our work? There's some traditional stuff like press releases. You can you know write up a very short, to the point bio about your comic, send it out to whoever, you know whether it's a, a magazine, and when I say magazine I'm not just talking about physical magazines there are all kinds of I, I maybe they don't refer to them, like blogs and things like that places that would be interested in your particular comic book a lot of these blogs are actually looking for content because it takes it takes a lot of work if if somebody I mean you could almost write the blog post for somebody you write that blog post you send it out and don't make it too sales pitchy but make sure that they know what the product is it's something that somebody would be interested use a unique 
unique angle, submit that to a blog and let, let the blogger know, you know, this is, here's an article I wrote. I'm kind of introducing this comic book, but there's some other useful information. Maybe it can be a tutorial on how to do something. People, something that, that their readers are going to be interested in. And that takes so much work off of them because they don't even have to write it. Maybe they can go in and edit it or whatever. Uh, but they're looking for stuff like that because the more content a blogger can put out, the better. So put that in your press release, send that out, you know, along with photos and or, or whatever else you need. And you can offer to do an interview with a blogger or a vlogger or a podcast. Podcasts are big. I know when I was marketing my book, I reached out to different podcasts. I reached out to different blogs. And I made sure that those particular blogs would be interested in the kind of work I do, the genre of comic book that I'm working in. And you know, also send out free samples of your book, whether it's digital or physical. Send that out to a blogger. If they read it, you know, they may want to do a review on it or give you a testimonial. If it's a, you know, if you can get testimonials from people in the industry respect or that are familiar with, that can that can also help kind of boost your credibility and get other people on board. Because one of the biggest, you know, when you go to Amazon and you're looking through books. Or, or any product at Amazon, one of the things that you look at more than almost anything is those reviews. If you see something with a lot of five-star reviews, that's like gold. People want that extra, they want that testimonial. They trust other people that they admire and they wanna know what their opinion is and that's gonna help inform their buying decisions. Okay, we alluded to social media. Now, obviously you guys all, if you're on YouTube, you know about social media, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, uh, there's so many of them out there, TikTok. There's so many different ways you can use to market your books and there's, uh, you know, and they're all different and you gotta figure out what works best for each platform. But the one thing I want to stress that is a through line through no matter what platform you're on, something that I will stand by and, you know, not everyone does it, but I, I'm a big advocate of you know, don't wait until your book is done to start promoting it. Webcomic artists are great at this because they're putting out their webcomic pages and then if they get to the point where they want to collect it in a trade or run a Kickstarter, they've built that audience. But even if you're not doing a webcomic, my book's not a webcomic, but I do YouTube videos and I show my process of the comic. So that is building anticipation all the while. And you, you know, avoid spoilers and things like that and you can do that. Show people what you're working on, whether it's Instagram posts, whether it's on YouTube or whatever, and build that anticipation Participation. So by the time you do go to launch this thing, you've got a built-in audience. Some people will work in obscurity until their book is done and then they're like, okay, it's done. And you wasted all that time, you know, trying to build an audience. So, I mean, that's, that is an old way of thinking in my book. I mean, and it's still, this is still the case, like in certain companies, if you're working on something, uh, entertainment property, they'll have these, you know, non-disclosure agreements and they don't want anything to get out there. And I understand some of the reasons by that, but I think that there's a, a happy medium there. I think there's, when you watch stuff for movies and things that are coming out, you know, you get these things like, oh, there's a leak. You know, we've somebody leaked out this information, and a lot of that isn't actual leak. This is stuff that the the some of it is, but a lot of this stuff is stuff that the the movie studios or whatever had purposely let out and made it look like a leak, so people are just chopping at the bit to get this information and everything, and that's going to help build anticipation. But a lot of times, still a lot of secrets. There's still a lot of stuff they're holding back. So you can do a little bit of both. You don't have to give away the farm as you're working. No matter what you're doing, build up that anticipation, even if it is even if you don't want to give away a whole lot you can build anticipation by saying I've got this secret project you've got to know about it but I'm not gonna give you too much and get people excited that way all right so social media is great but there's still some older tactics and methods that still work and email is one of those email is so powerful with all the other stuff that's come along, email is still there and it is still super effective. I have, I'm you know, building my email list. If you're gonna do this, you gotta do it right. And you can go a little deeper on this and find out how to build a mailing list. But the one thing I do, you've gotta give something away, what we call a lead magnet. Something that's for free that people are gonna wanna join from. Because if you just tell people, oh, follow my email news list and you're gonna get information and everything like that, maybe not everyone's gonna be as apt to do that. But if you can give them something, and of course there's already, 
there's there's people up there, and I get these people. They'll sign up because my lead magnet is the Comic Maker Starter Kit. So it is, you know, it's a it's basically this digital product that's got all this stuff to help you make comics. So you know, people will will join my mailing list to get this free product. And there are some people that they join, they get the product, and immediately unsubscribe. And to me, that's kind of like the people that go to like a donation car wash, free car wash when you know it's for donation for you know something they're trying to raise money. If somebody was just to go to this car wash, get their free car wash and drive off without giving a donation, that's kind of what that is. But there's people out there like that. There's nothing you could do about it. But the, th the other thing that I try to do is with my, I try to add value in my actual email. So even if they are there to get that free thing, we've already established they like free stuff. They want free stuff. So if you can continue to give them great content and every once in a while, I'll give out free stuff. I've given out fonts and things through my email list. So that it rewards the people that are staying on, the people that aren't just going on to you know get that free thing and just cut and run but anyway with this product I mean that's been really effective as far as growing my email list and there's more to that that could be a whole other episode and maybe even though this is the last episode I might get into on another video some other like email growing your email list tactics and things if that's something people are interested in something that I want to implore you to do is to think bigger than your comic because the unfortunate truth is most people don't make a lot of money off of comic books. There are people that make a, a fantastic living off their comics, but it's almost like being an actor where most, the majority of actors are struggling actors. They might get a gig here or there or whatever, but they're not movie stars. But you have these movie stars and they're doing fantastic. That's kind of the way the comic book industry is. But there are other ways, you know, and I'm in the camp where I'm not, you know, I'm not some big name comic book artist. Most people don't even know about my comics, but I'm able to make a living off of doing comics one way or another because I'm looking at other ways to use my ability or my love of comics to create other things that are marketable. So whereas my comics aren't huge sellers, I've found comic adjacent products and things like that that do bring in money and help keep the lights in the underground layer on. So I sort of use this spoke and wheel system. So whereas the comic books or in this case, I think most things kind of revolve around this YouTube channel. So that would be the hub of this wheel, is the YouTube channel, which is more or less about comics. I talk about other ways to earn a living making art and things like that, or I, I used to before I started doing this. Pretty much it's all comic-centric stuff, and I'll get back into branching off and doing some other things. But the core of it is my branding on this YouTube channel is art, advice, and inspiration for mad creators. So that kind of sums up, but that's what I I do. I'm here and again a lot of that has to do with comic books and creating comics and that's a lot of the content that I talk about. So people they're here to learn how to make a comic and through that they may get introduced to some of the other things I'm doing. A lot of them will go and they'll get the Comic Maker Starter Kit. And from there, they may look at that and, they, oh, this is great, I want more, and then I can get them to buy some of my digital products like the Comic Maker Toolkit, which is an even bigger tool for creating comics. And I've got font packs and things like that, and then I've got my comics. And, you know, when, when I'm since I'm doing this whole YouTube series on creating comics, maybe I want to go deeper and do a deeper dive. Maybe I want to put out some paid content you know some tutorials and things like that so in addition to my digital products my comic maker toolkit my fonts and all those things I also have physical products I've got a book series <laughs> make your own comics make your own heroes make your own manga I've got tons of these books that are available only on my Amazon shop which there's a link in the description but you know this is just another angle this here's a book that you know it's it's hero data files where you can design your own heroes you can add all the different stats and things like that but these are other products that have to do with comic books that help bring in income where I can support myself based on my love of creating comics. That's an avenue I can go into. I also have prints and things like that. I've got all this stuff. So I'm thinking bigger than just the comic book, but in all, everything that I do, I try to make it kind of connect to this, this hub which is the YouTube channel. And that hub can be your comic book. Of course, you have to build an audience, you have to build a fan base for that comic before you can start to sell other things that have to do with that comic. So, whereas I don't know that Young and the Dead, my comic book is popular enough or big enough to do that, if I did have a real popular title, I could start doing selling, you know, stickers or prints based on my comic. That's not as easy. One thing that people do want that's not contingent on knowing who I am or whatever is to learn how to make comics. So they come here to learn that and then I can introduce them to some other things. So start 
trying to think bigger than your comic. All right, I mentioned people finding me that may not know anything about my particular comic book. And one of the ways that you can do that is another marketing method, a very common one, a very important one, and that's SEO. So when I put out my videos, you know, I fill in every single, there's a thing where you can add keywords and things like that. It's also your images, your thumbnails, so that when people are on there searching, and YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world next to Google, which is also, which owns YouTube. So with these two massive ways people are searching, these platforms, don't sleep on all these different ways. Any, I use any little way that I can to get people aware of what I'm doing. So if somebody's you know, typing in how to ink a comic or how to market a comic, certain things that I come up on the top of YouTube search are like I think if you search how to submit a comic I might come up first I don't I've got an older video on that or how to you know or mini comics there's certain things that I I've got like the number one spot in and that's kind of hard to do but you know some of it there's not a lot of people searching for that that could be part of it but you know any way that you can get because people are searching for different things and when you're niching down you're not looking at how to create comics necessarily in general you can go a little deeper for people that are looking for a particular aspect of making comics that maybe somebody else hasn't covered. So when they search that, you pop up. And that is all having to do with keywords and descriptions and images. SEO is huge. You can go way deep into that and I don't have time to go into that, but you can do your own research, but you need to be aware of it and you need to take advantage of it. I want to talk a little bit about distribution and raising the funds to get your comic books out there. So the stand in comic books or traditional comic books here in America, the standard has always sort of been diamond distribution, or at least it has been for a while. Way back in the day, there were others. They sort of have a monopoly. Things have changed and things are continuing to change as this industry changes. I don't really know the state of diamond, you know, from now into the future or where they're going to be with this. But for me, this is me personal as a as an independent comic book artist, Diamond is not indie friendly. Now, if you are with a you know a publisher like Marvel in DC, that's pretty much or it was the way to go. That stuff can all change. But for an indie comic, I wouldn't even. I know some people that are like, I got to get my book into Diamond, and you can do that. And there's you can research other videos on on how to do that if you want. I think it's sort of an archaic business model, and they are not indie friendly by any stretch of the imagination. So I don't even worry about that. There's other ways to get your work out there. One of those ways is through Kickstarter, you know, or indie go go now with crowdfunding you have to realize as the name suggests you have to have a crowd before you can fund a comic so you've got to start like I said before don't wait till your comics done start building that and also and speaking of don't wait till your comics done in my personal opinion if you are going to you know run a Kickstarter your book should either be already done or very close to being done because that is going to give people a little more faith that you're going to be able to deliver because I've contributed to a lot of Kickstarter campaigns that just never delivered because because they started off and they weren't anywhere near being done with their comic and then life happens things get in the way and it creates a, sort of a disaster. Fortunately for me, I tried to be smart about it and the two Kickstarters that I've run, I delivered way ahead of schedule, or not make way ahead, but ahead of schedule. I think anytime you can deliver ahead of schedule, that's good because you want to under promise and over deliver. Make sure if you're gonna go into doing a Kickstarter that you are ready or an Indiegogo or any sort of crowdfunding type campaign that you're doing it the right way and that you're prepared and that you've done your research because a lot of people get burned. The good thing about Kickstarter, Indiegogo, crowdfunding is that it's a testing ground. It's great if you fund, but if you don't fund, then at least that tells you that, well, this didn't fund the chances of me probably selling this book if there's not that big of a demand for it are a little slim and maybe I need to go back to the drawing board and continue to build my audience or or whatever the case or work on my skills as an artist or any number of things but it's a good testing ground and really the only investment that you have with these Kickstarters up front is the time that it takes and it does take a considerable amount of time but you don't have to go out and print a book first and then distribute it you can just show what the book looks like or what you're gonna do or whatever the case is and you can use it like I said as sort of a pre-order system or testing ground to see if your book's going to sell and hopefully it will do good and you know there's so many success stories I mean that's kind of the way to go I mean I've seen so many people just do bonkers numbers on Kickstarter and Indiegogo they're in that sort of slim number of people that are actually making a really good living off of comics because they've 
done, run successful Kickstarters. As I mentioned, you sort of have to have an audience before you can run a successful crowdfunding campaign, but there are other ways to go about that. And one of those ways is partnering up with people because like for instance, so this is the 100 Days of Making Comics anthology. This is the second one. I did the cover. I've got a story in here. I wrote the foreword, but this was this is a great example of maybe you don't have that big of an audience. Maybe you have a small audience, but all the other people involved in sort of an anthology are also contributing to this book. So you're multiplying all these different people's audience to be able to successfully run a book. Now, the, I think I think this is still the case. I heard this this statistic a while back, but I'm pretty sure it's still true, is that on Kickstarter, the number one category for funding, the one that successfully funds the most is the category of dance. And the reason for that is because dance is largely a group effort. So if you are in a dance troupe or whatever, you're doing some sort of a dance project, you've got all those people involved, all their immediate family that want to see this happen, that want to see the people involved, all the dancers together. If you've got a large dance group, it's probably going to fund because you have so many other people that you've just automatically just exponentially built this fan base for. So that's why these anthologies might be a way to start off. And this was a little bit of a different approach. We didn't make any, like when this book funded, no one got any money from it. But what we did get was the books. You get this largely, you know, pretty big book. This is print on demand, which if you're to print something like this, it can be a little pricey for what you can sell it at. This has got a, a 20, I think it's a 21 or 22. Yeah, it's got a $22 suggested retail price. You know, I sell these on my website for 20 bucks, but since I didn't have to pay for any of the printing of this, and I've got a number of these copies, I can make some money from selling these online. And there's a lot of people that still want these, and I sell these, and, and they do sell. And I've known other artists who got their copies, and they've sold out of them already. So that's another way to go about this. And also, anthologies, this was a four-page story, so it's not like I'm creating a full, as an entry-level point, this is a great way to go and get your feet wet on a Kickstarter. So with crowdfunding, it's kind of like a direct-to-consumer model where they support the book, you send it out direct to the customers, but what if you want to get your books into bookstores or comic shops? If you're doing print-on-demand, Amazon is a way to go. If you print your print-on-demand books through Amazon, they also have you know affiliates and, and ways to get some of those books into stores if there's a demand for those if the stores actually want them but you can go and you can do your marketing and say i've got these books on amazon you can order through them amazon carry them in your store or just direct through you or whatever the case is but you know that's one way to get it into like traditional bookstores as far as comic book stores if you are published through a major comic book publisher, whether it's more of an indie publisher, but one that comic book stores carry, or Marvel or DC, that's usually through Diamond. But there are other ways to go about that. One way is just to, again, do that sort of street team, guerrilla marketing, go to different comic book stores. If you're in an area that there are a lot of comic book stores, a friend of mine, Gazbot, Gaz Gretzky, he's done videos on, you know, and if I can remember, I'll put a link but anyway, you can search Gazbot, you know, getting your book into comics stores on YouTube. But he does a video where basically he just, you know, drove around. He lives in California, so there's a lot of comic book stores. Just drive around. And he's a pretty gregarious guy. He's he is not no stranger to meeting and talking with people, which helps. So he's got his books in a number of comic book stores. Now, this isn't a massive way to make money. and even talks about that where a lot of times you're not making a whole lot of money. But there are ways to boost those sales. And I'll talk about those in just a second. But if there aren't really any comic book stores in your area or you just can't go driving to all these comic book stores you know comic stores that are willing to carry your books now if you're familiar with alternate comics which I talk about all the time they usually run this ad it's a comic shop locator service so you can go online at this URL right here comic shop locator and and it's got a list of comic book stores now even in the comic book itself these are, this is a list here of all the comic book shops that carry Alterna. Now the important thing to know about this is Alterna is an independent comic book company and they're not distributed through Diamond. They used to be, but I think they've moved away from Diamond. So all these comic book stores that they have listed here are open to carrying independent comics, which means they may be open to carrying your independent comic books. So you kind of weed through the, the comic book companies. They're just like, nah, we don't, we don't, we only do Marvel or DC or whatever. Um, so this is a really valuable information. It's on, I think it's in every single one of their comic books. So pick up an alternative title or check out this online. 
And I don't know if the information on here is different than this, but I know these here are ones that are that carry Alterna, which means they carry independent. Now, Alterna, they're a respectable company. They do great work. So whether just because they carry their work may not mean they will carry yours, but it's a starting point. So you got your work in the comic book stores and that is great, but in all likelihood, they're probably gonna just sit on the shelf collecting dust. The comic book store is probably doing you a favor <laughs> even by carrying them. Hopefully they'll sell and you can, there's things that you can do to help make those sell and things that comic book stores are probably very open to, especially, you know, local comic book stores. If there's some in your area, offer to do a signing and I mean, comic book stores are always looking for events and things like that because they need to bring in people they need to bring in new customers so if they can do if they have an excuse to do some kind of event whether it's a comic launch party or you can go in and do sketches or sketch covers or whatever like purchase some of these Marvel or DC sketch covers and for an additional fee you can have this artist design on or whatever the case is and I do these with my local comic book stores and you know and I make I make a decent amount of scratch from doing that and it brings people in the comic stores and they love it you know I, I sell more of my books because I bring my books along I bring you know work my workbooks all this kind of stuff and it's a good deal for both of us. Like I said, comic stores, some of them are hurting. In order to boost business, they've got to bring new people into the stores. So they're, a lot of them are more than willing to create an event. So help them, work with them to organize some sort of event. And maybe you don't have the ability or maybe you're not at the point where you can bring a lot of people in, but maybe there are other artists, local artists in your area that have a little better track record or a bigger audience, and maybe you can get a bunch of people together and do like a mini comic convention or something like that. And speaking of comic cons, that leads us to events. Typically, when we think about comics, we think of comic cons, and obviously that is definitely a route to go. The average comic convention is sort of moved away from comics in general. I used to do a lot of cons. I don't really do any anymore because I found that sales, I mean, things just moved more and more away from comics into entertainment everything but I still know people that have successfully been able to market their comics at comic conventions so that's an option but I want you to think a little outside of comics so there's a company if you've been to a comic convention you maybe you've seen them but it's flex comics and they've niched down basically what they've done is they've taken comics and they've combined it with working out and fitness and everything like that you know they've got t-shirt prints are probably bootlegs but they've got they've got prints of like Deadpool but it's it's spelled P-U-L-L -L where he's lifting weights and stuff like that and you know muscle shirts and they've got their own comics and all that stuff and they've got you'll probably see them at conventions carrying like the bags around they sell these big bags that you can carry stuff with with their advertisement that's another great tactic because everyone needs something to carry their stuff in and if you can put your branding on it and sell it and make money off of it <laughs> there is a double whammy right there but the thing that they did what was really smart was First of all, they niche down, and you'll see them at these comic conventions, and they do well, but where they do better is at fitness places, because in those fitness trade shows, they're the only game in town pretty much that's doing comics so they are like a unicorn picture a, co a comic convention but with only like workout type things and sometimes these trade shows are a little more to exhibit at than your comic cons comic cons i know a lot of people think they're expensive but in comparison to your typical trade show uh they're fairly inexpensive they could be you know thousands of dollars for a booth at a trade show but if you think about this, if you are the only person doing what you're doing and you've got your audience there, everyone involved in fitness, chances are a lot of them probably are into, you know, comic books or at least movies based on comics and things like that. That just creates a whole other market for you. So for me, something I do a lot of mad scientists, obviously mad scientist type things. So it makes would make sense for me, and I haven't done this yet, which is stupid and ridiculous on my part, but I should be going to some of these science conventions because I guarantee there's no one doing mad science supplies. Try to think outside of just what you're doing in your comic books. What is your comic book about? If you have a comic book that features cats, maybe get this thing into pet stores. Not just selling what you're doing as a comic, but the subject matter too, because there's people that are into that subject that may not even think about getting a comic, but if they knew about it, maybe they would buy a comic based on something that they love. And you don't have to just do this at comic book conventions. You can also, you know, on Facebook, there are tons of Facebook groups that are super niche down, super specific to a certain things. And chances are, if you're drawing comics about, let's say hamburgers or pizza, if there is a Facebook page based on pizza and your book is about a pizza warrior or something, they may be interested in that. And chances are, if you're doing a book about some kind of a pizza themed comic, 
you're probably into pizza and you probably know a little bit about it. So go on to some of these Facebook groups and you know, don't just go in there and spam your comic books. Be a part of that community because it's something that you like. And as you go, and also look into the sort of terms and service and everything and make sure what their stance is on promoting. But even in a general conversation when you're talking to somebody, you don't have to be spammy or anything. They say, I mean, I love pizza so much. I even draw a comic book about pizza. And then maybe somebody will ask about that and then you can drop a link if they're interested. Or here's another thing. You could build your own Facebook group around a topic that you love and where sometimes it might be hard to market a comic book, but if you're if you're building a fan base on something that there is a fan base around, you can build that and then you control it. You control that Facebook group and or or a Pinterest board or whatever the case is. And you, if you get that audience coming there for that, and depending on you know your own terms of service, maybe you set it so only you can advertise on this. You know, put your links and stuff on there. So you're golden right there. You've got this awesome community that is ready-made for whatever you're selling and then you can from time to time let you know promote your own books on there so there are so many different ways that you can market I've only touched the surface and I can keep going on with all these different marketing advice and tactics and methods and things like that it's the things that I haven't talked about that may do best because it's stuff that not everyone's doing or that I haven't done it's the new things the out-of-the-box thinking that as far as marketing that really does well so you got to be creative and we're all creative people so use that creativity not just to draw your comics and everything but to market your work and and I just kind of want to leave with, uh, obviously, one of the most important things you need to do is have a website. Have a, you know a site where people can go and get information on your books and everything, where you can have even an online store and all that. Now, you can post on, DV, you can have a DeviantArt thing or ArtStation and all that, but it's not the same as having that URL that's, that's branded around you, and it just adds so much legitimacy to what you're doing if you have your own website. So, and URLs are relatively inexpensive expensive to get. Uh, hosting can cost a little more, especially if you're adding e-commerce to it. But there are ways like through you know WordPress, if you know how to do that, that you can do something fairly inexpensively and have your own website. And that's really going to say so much. But as I mentioned before, there are millions of different ways that you can market your book. There are all kinds of creative routes that you can go down to get, get the word out on your comics. So if you have th things that I didn't talk about on this episode, let me know in the comments section. Section. We're all about sharing. I've given you a lot of my advice, so you know, feel free to give back because you might be doing something cool that's working for you that I might not even know about. No trade secrets here. Share your work. We're all in this together. Comics is a hard thing to do, uh, so we've got to we got to have each other's back, and that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this series. And as I said, I've got two more. I've got a bonus episode, and I've got a quick tip as well. But more or less, this is the final week, and this has just been a blast doing this series. And I'm so glad that it's helping. I get messages all the time with how well this series is helping people out, and hopefully, it will continue to go on. Even if I'm not producing new episodes, people will continue to discover this. I think it's evergreen content. It's something that a lot of this. I mean, some of this stuff with distribution, things like that. It may change, it may, you know, there may be as we move on, we move forward and the state of the comic book industry changes, but a lot of this stuff is gonna be good information from now, from just going forward for a long time. When I set out to do this, I'm, I mean, I'm not a quitter. If I set out to do something, I'm gonna do it. And But still, there's that doubt that can I do this? No, I, no one to my knowledge, I mean, there's a lot of other information out there. Uh, all this stuff that I'm talking about, you can find here and there on websites if you bounce to different things if you do all these different searches but as far as one continuing series i don't think this has been done so and i don't know that anyone's going to come along and do it because it's not easy and if somebody does uh, kudos to you but i can just say as somebody who did this whole thing it wasn't easy but i'm glad i did it i, I can say that i've done it and i'm just so happy that so many people are getting valuable information out of it so yeah this has been a blast i will see you guys for the bonus video and the quick tip but as far as these go these proper issues that i'm dropping at the beginning of the week to introduce the topic that's going to do it and it's been a blast and thank you everyone i can't i can really can't thank you enough uh, you guys are the reason why I'm doing this and I'm glad that you're getting something out of it and you know thank you that's gonna do it for today and this pretty much this series I'll see you for these other two videos coming up this week but for the most part that's it and thanks again I'll see you guys later that is all
Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at CircWorks on social media, and now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to CircWorks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.